What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go through and show you guys how I wired in the Holly Terminator X Max. Um, I had a few people comment on the last video um, and they were requesting that I show them how I wired everything because they wanted to go the same route and I kind of wanted to make the video for anybody who may be going the route in the future so you guys can see it also. Um, everything's not quite exactly where it needs to be yet. I was going to wait until everything was where it needs to be. Um, but some of the people really wanted to see it now, so I'll just show it to you guys. And then I might do a follow-up video after I get everything squared away to show you guys how I ended up tidying some of it up. Um, but let's get to it. For starters, guys, I decided to mount my Holly underneath of the passenger seat. Holly sells this bracket for the Fox body and SN95 new edge, pretty much, what would that be, like 79 to 04. Um, Mustangs for underneath the seat, it just bolts in to the stock bolts, um, or I guess studs. These will be taken off once I go to put the seat on, and then the seat just drops on over top of it. Um, the seat, because I have... 2013 Mustang seats in here and it does have a bar that goes across here um, So I'm gonna have to unplug everything lay it back Throw the seat in and then put everything over top of that bar. So obviously I don't want to sandwich all this stuff down Sounds like a terrible thing to do um, But I think you guys can pick up these brackets here for I think it's right around a hundred bucks Maybe it's like 90 95 bucks on Holly's website um, And for me, it just seemed like a simple easy way to go the Terminator X Max is a lot wider than the Terminator X. Um, so there wasn't really a whole lot of options underneath um, here and in that fender well. Um, now I'm sure you could get away with putting it somewhere else. Um, and if you have just the Terminator X system, it's probably going to be a lot easier to put it in other places like in that wheel well. Um, but for me, it was just easier with having the Max just to put it underneath the seat. Now with this, the second module is up under here, the TIVCT module, there you can see it. I used rivet nuts on the trans tunnel and then just some bolts, bolted it down in here. So that can be taken in and out whenever. Put that back up. And then, let me pop this thing up. Up under here is both of the ignition modules or your coil drivers I guess is what they call them um, there's one up in here one here and it may seem like a terrible idea but for me I feel like it works well I ended up buying some velcro strips and just velcroing them down um, I don't see why there'd be any sort of issue with that um, and it also gives it a little bit of a cushion for any sort of vibration. Easy on and off. The wires are routed down in through here. And then they just follow the stock body harness all the way up through here. Um, I do have part of the wiring coming up through here that goes to the TIVCT module. And then all of the wires that need to be spliced into the car itself go over the trans tunnel behind the radio and all that. And on that side, I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, but everything else, the main harness goes up through here into the firewall. I'll show you guys that. Also, I just wanted to say that this vacuum line obviously isn't going to be here forever. It's just sitting here right now for whenever I wanted to run it the last time. Um, I will also be tucking this into this um, passenger footwell here on this side and then running it up through here with all this stuff. Um, and then this just comes up through there. And that's where the screen is. I'm going to end up tidying that stuff up. I'll probably find a more permanent location somewhere on the dash in the future. Um, but for now, I just ran it out of there and set it over there. Now, I chose to come out of the firewall right here. It's in the wheel well on the passenger side. Um, I just drilled, I think it's a two and a quarter inch hole here. Seems like a really big hole, but don't be afraid. Just find a spot in this area if you guys want to go this route that I went. Cut a hole in there. It's not a huge deal, guys. Um, most of the stuff fits pretty tightly in there. I don't have a grommet in there yet, but I do have a grommet for it. Um, so that will be going in there in the future. But these, these edges aren't very sharp for the moment. Um, 
And then this is the other vacuum line. It's not hooked up right now. I pulled it down through. And then this goes to your wide band. I still need to get this zip tied up. Same with this fuel line here. Again, guys, none of this stuff's finished up quite yet. This is just a rough idea. Um, but that main harness for the Holly comes through here and the wheel well, and then goes up into your engine bay. Um, you guys don't need to worry about any water getting in there or anything like that. I'm going to be putting a grommet in there. And then also this has a fender well liner, so nothing should get in there. Um, so if you guys want to go this route, don't worry too much about that. And then obviously everything just comes out into the engine bay. Um, I still need to zip tie all this stuff up, make it look nice, tidy some of this stuff up. Um, but yeah, everything comes out here, runs to where it needs to go. Um, I will say, if you guys put your holly underneath the seat right here, there's not quite enough room for your ignition coil harness and your fuel injector harness. So this is where it gets kind of difficult um, for me. And I had already bought the bracket. I had already mounted everything. Um, so I ended up having to go this way. If you guys want to do it differently, you can. But I just extended both of the harnesses for your coils and your fuel injectors um, just towards on the end here. And then I bought the same coating or same cover that they used from the factory um, for the Holly and made it look nice. It honestly wasn't that bad. Didn't have any issues with it. Obviously, the car runs if you want to check out that last video. Um, a lot of the wires, which you cannot see, because the Holly comes with a lot of extra stuff, is tucked up underneath the manifold. Um, they have your oil pressure sending unit wire. If you guys want to run um, an oil pressure sender on your Holly screen, um, there's a fuel pressure sensor wire if you guys want to see fuel pressure. There's a map sensor if you want to run a different map sensor. There's all sorts of different wires that they give you that you don't necessarily need. Um, and they all come out in the same location. So to make it look nice and clean, since I wasn't going to be using those, I just wound them all up, zip tied them up nicely, put them underneath the intake manifold in a manner that they weren't going to get super chafed up on other parts. And like I said, everything's not where it needs to be quite yet, guys. This still needs to go, obviously, to the MAF sensor. It all needs to get zip tied up, um, but it's just a rough idea. But that is the engine bay. All right, guys, so I know this is a little bit of a mess, but bear with me. Like I said, nothing is where it needs to be. I just have everything kind of laid out so I could get it to run, make sure everything was perfect, and then I'll go through and actually put these wires where they belong. Um, but this gives you guys an idea. So the only inputs you need for the Holly um, are a switched 12-volt source, a all-the-time 12-volt, so this just has to go straight to your battery. This one's your switched, which is the red and white wire. This one's the solid red wire. Straight to your battery, switch 12 volt. And then this one, I believe, is a tack output. And then I'm honestly not sure what this one's for. I'll look it up before the end of the video, um, but it's not necessary. Both of these two aren't necessary. Um, so I'll just end up tucking those out of the way. And then this wire right here needs to go to your, I pulled it down and I still need to tape it all up. Um, but it needs to go to your brake switch, um, and it's for your um, accelerator pedal harness. Um, and then I'm just running a Coyote Swap pedal bracket with a um, 11 to 22 Mustang um, gas pedal, and it's plugged in up there. All the wires are just running across right now from over there. Um, we're going to get everything tidied up eventually. I started, I got, just to test it out, on the clutch pedal, I put the new, because this, um, the actual, the gas pedal comes with new covers for your clutch and your brake. I got the clutch one on, but I haven't put the brake one on yet. They're kind of a pain to put on, um, but it should look like this once it's all finished up. Um, but honestly, it's super easy to get all that stuff wired in guys pretty much you need three inputs 
and a 12 volt source um, and the holly system will run all right guys and it's all laid out in the instructions so you guys can go through this too um, but that green one that i wasn't so sure about is actually for a fuel pump um, it says though if you're running over 15 amps that you need to run a relay setup um, so just make sure you guys aren't running over 15 amps. I didn't end up using that wire. I went with the stock wiring kind of. I'll show you guys that next. Um, but if you guys want to run it this way, you can. All right, guys. So as far as the fuel system wiring goes, um, like I said before, we're running the Lethal Performance Fuel Hat with twin 465 liter per hour pumps. Obviously, like I said before, it's overkill for the current setup, but I want to go boost it in the future. So I didn't want to have to worry about dropping the tank, upgrading the pumps, redoing this whole system again. So I just kind of went overkill for now. Um, but Lethal Performance gives you a whole wiring harness setup for this specific application. Um, and it includes these wires right here to run straight to your battery for your power source. It is super long. I need to shorten it. It's just pretty much this way right now so that we could get it to run. Up here, I mounted the two relays. Um, I used rivet nuts and then just bolted them on. You guys don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just use self-tapping screws. I just thought it was a little bit cleaner. I still need to mount the fuses. And then you need a 12 volt switch source to kick the fuel pumps on. It's basically just activate, activates those relays so that the fuel pumps kick on. Um, and then you need a ground. I just went off the stock ground right here. Works pretty good. Um, and then for that 12 volt switch source, I went off of the stock inertia switch um, output. So if the car ever gets into any sort of accident, it will kick those fuel pumps off because obviously it wouldn't be very good if one of those fuel lines get broken and we're dumping at a rate of you know, almost a thousand liters per hour onto the ground wouldn't be so good. Um, so that's the way I went with it. Super easy. Um, you guys can do it differently if you want to. You don't have to use the inertia switch. That's just what I went with because it's right there. <clears throat> and then for your fuel level sender, um, these two come off of the fuel hat themselves. And then you need to tie into your, um, looks like yellow and white and black and orange wires. And then that'll give you your um, fuel level gauge. So that's pretty much it for that wiring. All right, guys, and I've said it in the past, but for anybody who's new, um, for the starter circuit, I ran a, because obviously I put the battery in the trunk now. Um, I did battery relocation. So I ran a positive wire to the inside of this wheel well here. And then I used a bulkhead connector and put a positive lead on this side. And then there's a negative terminal right there. Right there's the negative lead, goes to the ground, grounds out to the body. And this, guys, will allow you to run your factory um, battery harness, just like it was before, same, right back into the holes. And you don't have to do a bunch of new wiring, a bunch of new figuring stuff out. You just run the power wire right here to your fuse box and you'll have all of your interior electronics and all that stuff. And then your starter harness will run down. Um, I just did two P clamps. You can see one of the P clamps right there. Um, down here on the front of the oil pan and then routed it to the stock. I'm running a stock 4.6 starter. Um, you cannot run a Coyote starter, at least not the stock one. And this configuration it will not fit with the headers um so i know power by the hour sells a shorty like a compact starter for the coyote swaps um, but i'm just running a four six two valve starter fit right in behind the headers and it cranks this thing over just fine it's ran twice already so um but yeah that's all you guys need to have a starting system if you guys don't like the look of the wires and stuff um, you can do it differently um, this is just the way i did it um, some of this stuff still needs to get tidied up whenever we do the um, gauge harness because this plugs into your oil pressure sending unit um, 
so on and so forth. Um, but for me, it was just easy to throw the battery harness back in here. And then I can have, if I ever need to jump a car or jump this car from the front or the back, I can. If I want to charge it in the garage from the front or the back, I can. So to me, it was just easier to do it this way. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for the setup. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them down below and I can answer them. Um, I don't know that I'll need to do a whole nother follow-up video. Um, but if you guys do have a question big enough, I can do another follow-up video for you guys. Um, as far as the gauges go, the stock gauges, um, if you guys are wondering how to get that set up, hit up um, Nathan Hensley. Um, I do have a video farther down if you scroll through my videos, um, giving you kind of a little bit of a run through on his harness that he can set up for you. Um, but basically, he you send your stock 4.6 wiring harness, engine wiring harness to him. He cuts out all the stuff that you don't need, sends it back to you. You hook it up into the a few sensors on your Coyote, and you'll have factory gauges. Um, I haven't got to that quite yet, guys, but that is an option if you guys want to. Either check out that video down below or... Um, hit him up again. His name is Nathan Hensley um, Or if you guys want to you can run any of the Holly screens Holly sells a few different size screens and they sell the bezels that you'll need to um, put it in the factory location and I think they look pretty good um, But obviously if you're going for the sleeper look you don't really want people to know that you're running a coyote under the hood or you just like the look of the factory gauges um, you can hit him up and get that wiring harness and go from there. I will be doing a video in the future. So if you guys do want to catch that, um, I will be doing one on the full install of that wiring harness. Um, but for now I do have a video, kind of an introduction video to it. Um, so you guys can check that out, but that will be all for this video guys. I will catch you in the next one.